Good afternoon. Welcome to the DirectLink stage. I'm Joe Duffner with DirectLink Technologies. DirectLink is a data center co-location facility. We provide the power, cooling, security, and connectivity for people's data. We house IT infrastructure in our facility. Our customers also like being in our facility because we have a great connectivity story. We provide high speed, low latency connectivity to anywhere in the world. We do cloud on-ramping and hybrid cloud IT solutions. So if you locate your IT infrastructure in our building, we can also connect you to anywhere in the world. So I'm happy to be here. I'm also very happy to introduce Thomas Voigt. Hi. So before you go to the reception, I want to rock a little bit this room. So please stand up and make a deep breeze that you can survive this presentation. <laughs> and you should breathe through your nose in and through the chest and, and the mouth out. Okay, now you can sit again. And I'm, I'm sure you will wake up now. <laughs> okay, so we talked about healthcare and we talked about data and trust and we are in the big data presentation. So the question is, what is about you? You're waking up in the morning, maybe you have a breakfast, you're jumping in your car, you're starting the car, you see an intelligent dashboard and it tells you about your oil pressure, your battery, your, your tire pressure. But did you check and raise a hand honestly, what about your body? How you're measuring your health? Who is doing this in the morning? Who has, or can, then all my other questions are gone. Because now I would say, what kind of goals do you have? Weekly, monthly, quarterly? Is a car so much more in value than you? I, you see, I think we are Americans, and I'm a German and an American. We are crazy because we have the toys, and all this around us is more value than our own body. And I will talk a little bit that you pay in the future a little bit more attention, and maybe you have also the trust into what you are measuring because we are living in a digital world. And the digital world, we cannot stop. And sensor technology. I'm a little bit guilty with all this because long time ago, I developed all the materials for the sensors called semiconductors and you have the laser system and, and I call myself, I'm the architect, not for humans, for electrons. I'm building all this environment for electrons. But what we have as a big data can also help us if we trust the sensor technology and what we want to measure and how we want to have in the future a quality life. Because think about this, one word, say in a healthcare patient, what kind of picture you have in front of you? A sick people laying in a bed, right? Not you, hopefully, because you want to be a customer. You want to be a customer in a healthcare system that stays healthy, is healthy, and have a quality life. And not a life that you're still breathing, but that's all. So, and how can we do this? How we are teaching our kids in the future, what is a healthy lifestyle? So I will tell you a little bit about this and why we should change. You see this, the costs are really skyrocketing. And if you see all this, the question is, do you believe that with all this trillions of dollars we are investing in healthcare, that the peoples are healthier today? Who is believing this? You see, and it is true, they are not healthier. They are, I'm sorry. For chronic conditions, people are healthier today. General health, I agree with you. So, the, the question is, can we reduce chronic diseases? Can we yes. go? Because if we are teaching healthcare today, what do you think? How much of the Americans getting a pill and feeling better, but who is going really from the doctor to the root cause? That is our biggest problem. So, and in any other businesses, we were teaching and saying, you have to analyze until you find the reason. But in healthcare, we are doing this not. And 
We are believing, or if you're getting a pill and you're feeling a little bit better, oh, fantastic. And that we have to change. And preventive care starts with that you, you are responsible for your own health data. Doesn't matter who measures this, you're the owner. The question is, do you want to manage your data? And how you want to manage your data? That is a big question. And how you want to set goals for your life? Because in business, you know we have intelligent dashboards. And everybody knows what we cannot measure, we cannot change to improve. But what's with us? In the modern world, and we are living here in the modern world, the biggest problem is we are jumping out in the bed, out of the bed, we are going into the car. Is there any exercising? No, the car is in the house. So, bah, there is nothing. And maybe we are running a little bit to the office, but this is, and then we are sitting in front of the computer. We are sitting. The chiropractic should be in the future the job because you will have all this back pain and all this because who is looking like mine? We have modern watches and they are telling you, they give you a warning, you all have to stand up, you make your exercise. What is going on? Mine, I have a watch that tells me also the EKG. So if I'm running a marathon, then my cardiologist can push the button and say, hey, I pick you up because you are not healthy anymore. <laughs> so, but the problem is, with all the increasing cost, what is our mindset? What we want to achieve if we want to have a quality life? And I want to tell you a little bit about this, that we are missing, really, a strategy for preventive care. So that is the biggest issue, I believe. And as I told you, what you cannot measure, you cannot change to improve. Any sports guy knows it. But we, with our body, we ignore this. We are living in a wrong world. So the paradigm shift is, first, don't say to yourself, I'm a patient. Because immediately you have the picture in, I'm sick and I'm lazy. You want to be healthy and you want to smile and you want to go out and enjoy your life. And therefore, understand at first how you want to manage your own life. How want you measure that you are healthy? And the question is, do you have any strategy to manage then the data? Because we are living in the big data. So what can you do? And what can, who can help you with all this? Because think about you going once a year to the doctor, one point in the universe, and they're telling you all about your health in the future and in the past. Do you believe this in a statistic in your business? So you see, if it comes to you, you're always ignoring. And that's a big question. So H2ID, so that what we want in the initiative, we want to work with the students and the students you cannot believe the younger generation, they want to share. If you think about your kids, they want to share data. They want to learn a lot. But as we discussed a little bit before, it depends on the trust. To whom you're trusting. So, and that's now how you're developing a relationship, maybe to your doctor, or you have a relationship with your bank. So who will sit in a driver's seat of a preventive care? That's another good question. Will this be Highmark or UPMC? Or will this be maybe in the future the bank because they are managing the rest of the business? And when is the business healthy? If you are healthy and productive. So think about this. And we need long-term contracts in the healthcare so that we can manage the risks. So why would you need this? So that's not a question. Will you measure your health? Are you interested in be healthy or oh, maybe there's a health care and uh, if I'm sick, then I'm going in a hospital and they will give me the right things. Do you believe this? If you are in a hospital, you're feeling good. Maybe in some hospitals in the modern ones, but I can tell you in most of them, you see all the sickness and then you're reading all the, the bacteria coming and, and searching for you. So no. You want to stay healthy and you want to be responsible and measuring that if something is developing over continuous measuring in the wrong direction, that you are aware something goes on and the question is then, now you can discuss with your 
general physician or with your specialist because you can show them for the first time a bunch of data and you're saying there is a reproducible measurement it's maybe not FDA approved but it shows me a trend and you tell me please what the trend can be so think about what the quality of a discussion is instead you're coming in and said oh I need another point in the universe that will not help you so and the question is we are living in a digital world and the sense of technology goes exponential. You cannot imagine, as I ask in the morning, will we have a digital hearing aid where we can have any language responsible? So, and you know that you're training Alexis and then you have a little bit trained that they have a data set how you're speaking and that is your English. Another one in China he had also Alexis and he is training this. Now you have two data sets. All what you need is a predictive analysis how to synchronize both because they all have zero and ones and this means the same. And then you can talk in any language and everybody understands you. And you should know in the future there's another one, not the EKG, the EEG is 5,000 times weaker. But we are working on a chip that can read this waves and then we can synchronize and now if you're talking you're not talking in words you're talking in pictures also and think about how this will be with your spouse that will be an interesting discussion <laughs> so the answer is what what I do normally in the business I'm slicing the business in four sections and here I'm doing the same so the question is you have an energy system that's your cardiovascular system and your heart. Are you aware about this? Are you know how good you are in the morning? And how you want to train this? Do you know in the, let's say, how you're surviving? We as Bavarians, we have the fifth season at the moment. That's Oktoberfest. So you're measuring your waste management. That's the limb system, the kidney, the liver. So how do you know that you're drinking the right things? And if you're going to the reception, are there enough antioxidants in or how, how much do you should do after you're drinking? So that's a good question. Huh? And then you have the body control here, our brain. There is so much between the gut and the brain and we have early detections always with the heart. And there is a heart mass institute also, seven, 27 years of research where you can see if you are in balance or not. And that gives you immediately a hint that you have to work in some reason, in, in some sections, something goes out of control. But if you're not measuring, how you want to explain this to your doctor, what, what you're feeling? So, and the other is a lot of people. You know, for example, Johnson & Johnson, spare part industry. So you are from here to here, perfect in the spare foot. You can get a new hip, you can get a new knee, but what happened in most of the cases, you get pain and you're blaming the spare part industry. I can tell you, I'm as a physicist measured all the material. It's the best in the world what we can do with coding and all this, but think about what you're doing with your bones, with your ligaments and with your muscles if you're stopping for 30 years and a little bit older, any exercises. And who, uh, who, how many doing the exercises per day? Enough. So, because then what you get if you have a spare part is an air hook. How much can you bring on an air hook? So, and now you feel the pain and then you're blaming the spare part and this in the brain tells you, okay, I'm blaming here. And what is the result? You're developing arthrosis instead of that before you should go to your doctor managing this, how much exercise I need, please measure my osteoporosis uh, statement here with the bones, do I have still muscles or is it all fat, and what about my ligaments, how strong they are, can they support this spare part. And that is what we should really be aware of. every day, every month, every quarter, do you have goals and how you want to fulfill the goals and then smile per day and if you're not all reaching you know you can improve see a positive spiral should go always up and not down so and think about especially if you are in a dark room and you're working in this change your environment because the melatonin goes down cortisol goes up and I can promise you you will develop 
uh, special uh, depression. And that is not what you want as a healthy person and smiling. And if you develop this slowly, you should immediately get an early warning. So if you have all this and you're measuring this, so then you can go, oh, that's, that's the wrong part, that's one. So you can measure this in details. So before you push only the green, red or yellow button and it tells you what can you do. But if you want to make more details, you can set your goals in performance rates, one, two, three, four, per section, and say, that's what I want to do. And then the biggest issue, what we should learn from uh, preventive care, what we are getting on education. And if you're sharing a week in the quarter, you see this with Google. You have, with Google, fitness club is free. Then you have wellness, two, three weeks. And you have rooms, if you see you have a little bit burnout, you have there the opportunity for a light service. I would stop soon. So now think about you're going to the reception. What are your goals with the drinking, with the eating and all this, and what kind of exercise you will do in the evening. But so for the health performance, think about a little bit what you want to do with your own body in the future. Not only your car should have a maintenance, and, and because if you're buying a new car, you're not looking for the next repair station, right? You're looking that your car is going on and on and on. And that should be the same as you. Don't be afraid. You can go on and on and on. But it takes a little bit to measure and have goals. So that's important. And then manage your data and you get the help. And we would like to help you. The, the question is, so if you are interested, then contact H2ID and we will talk about, because in, we will start with the students and in a year from now, we will have a few thousand students with all the data and hopefully I can report to you how we are getting to a healthier population. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Or you want to run to the reception? Uh, if you have wine, red wine, that's antioxidants, and the beer should be darker because as you have dark beer, the antioxidants and they are in. And I can tell you there's a German club called Teutonia Männerchor. They have the only license here for Andex, and Andex is the 500-year-old from the monks. The monks came here to Pittsburgh and validated that they can sell the Andex beer, and this is three sorts of dark beer. And with every liter you're drinking, I can promise you a day more in your life quality. <laughs> Have a great reception. <laughs>